everyone, I'm Jeff Lee and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It's Wednesday, November the 4th and today, Minister Vern Lawrence will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Giving Living. So please join us now and be blessed with your favorite hymns and songs to glorify the Lord. Making the sorrow 
December of 1974, I did the math. That's 46 years ago. I, I can't believe it just seems like yesterday that my wife and I had moved to Lynchburg, Virginia to attend, at that time, Liberty Baptist College in September of that same year. At Thomas Road Baptist Church is where they had the college meeting at the time, and they had bought a few houses up and down the street on Thomas Road, and our division of music was in a 800 square feet small little house that was painted a very ugly green, and that was our division of music. But that year, I've, it's as plain as it happened yesterday, Chuck Milhoff, a Nazarene evangelist, was invited to speak on the Old Time Gospel Hour program that was broadcast around the world. Doug Oldham sang that morning. I vividly remember him singing. He sang Going Home, beautiful song. Chuck Milhoff spoke two weeks previous from that Sunday morning service in a chapel service for the college. You got to remember now, the college services for chapel services and everything were held in the auditorium of Thomas Road Baptist Church on Thomas Road in Lynchburg. And it would hold, oh, three, four, five thousand people, but our little college only had probably a thousand or so students there. All sorts of things going on, and it was growing like crazy. It's now called Liberty University and takes over half the city or whatever. Uh, the students and staff had been challenged two weeks previously to make pledges to give to the college because the college was wanting to hire professors, they were wanting to renovate buildings, they were wanting to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow as a vision of Jerry Falwell. And the students and staff pledged two weeks previous to give $105,000 in faith to the college. And I remember one time that Doug Oldham stood and he looked at a TV camera. I'll look at the camera here. And he said, so many people send donations and things to our church and our ministry, and they want a receipt back for income tax purposes. A few years ago, it was more important to have the receipts for things than in what it is nowadays because of so many exemptions don't apply anymore. But um, he looked at a camera and he said, if each person watching here would send $1 in an envelope to Thomas Road Baptist Church, we could raise over a million dollars. And I'm just a young college student with a wife and two children. I sang in the choir. I was involved in different ministries with the church. And I thought that was a bold statement. It really was. Less than six weeks later, they had a million dollars in one dollar bills all stacked up all over the front near the altar in that church. And Doug thanked people for helping us raise a million dollars. It, it, it was mind-boggling to me at the time. It still is mind-boggling. Just think about it. And so the students and staff pledged that. January 8th of that year, we gathered together to give the cash. And each one of us who had been challenged to give out of our hearts, out of our love, we saw what God could do when a group of people joined together for a joint mission and have faith. Chuck also was a gifted musician and a good singer. He wrote funny songs, he wrote serious songs, but he was also the co-writer with Bill and Gloria Gaither in 1970 when they wrote the song that you and I have all sung called The King is Coming. And so he was one of the writers and the inspirations of that song. A small Nazarene church in Lowell, Michigan not far from where we are, right here at Mosaic Church the Nazarene, had been waiting a long time to get Chuck Milhoff to come to their church for special meetings. Chuck was traveling the world. He was very, very popular among the Church of the Nazarenes, and everybody wanted him so, so bad. Pastor Warren Holcomb gave Chuck to Thomas Road Baptist Church for a special Sunday that they wanted to organize and have a sermon 
that they ended up calling Giving Living. Chuck at the time was associated with the Mid-American Nazarene College in Olathe, Kansas, where he still lives today. Chuck had attended Olivet from 1956 to 1960, Divinity work from 1960 to 63, and seminary from 1991 to 1994. He was known among the Church of the Nazarene to be a very, very strong, non-compromising holiness preacher in the Church of the Nazarene, and he traveled around the world proclaiming God's love, God's forgiveness, God's grace, and God's holiness that he can bestow to us. I can remember as a young man sitting there and having my eyes blown wide open with the concept of what he brought to us as students. And I'd like to share something like that with you today. I'm not, I can't even come close to Chuck Milhoff, but I want to do my best. He had explained to us that there are laws of nature that you, you, that you can't get away from. Here, I, I got an ink pen here. And if I, if I take the ink pen and I drop it, I could keep doing that forever and ever until the ink, oh, and I drop the ink pen. I could keep doing it, and when I drop the ink pen, it still fell down to the floor. We have a force of gravity. That is a prime example of a force of gravity. And the only time that, that is not a force here on this earth is when you get far enough from the earth where you're outside the force of gravity and you go weightless. Or you can get in an airplane and you can go up real fast and then kind of push the nose over the airplane, because I used to fly a lot, and once you get to a certain part, the papers float in midair. You actually float in your seat against your seatbelt. Items like that phone can just float in midair. It is so cool. And then you have to try to reach out and grab that because you're weightless. But we have principles in this world that we have that God has given us. And another strong, strong principle that Chuck brought to us so plainly was the um, fact of sowing and reaping. We hear so much today and you all will even give a smile and it's going to come to you to think of different ministries that you've seen on TV where people are asking you to sow into their ministry. And as you sow into, your, into their ministry, you will be blessed. They might exchange something with you. It can be a number of things that become a common denominator between you and that ministry. And there is some truth about having faith and a contact with that ministry because it comes from your heart if it's, if it's led by God. You don't want to do it out of greed, but if it's by God, you can be tremendously blessed. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you measure it, it shall be measured unto you again. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Men are going to give back to you, running over. We can read that and we can think, well, that's just nice something Jesus said to some people and you know, that shows that we should give some people, oh, I don't know, a, a Coca-Cola or something. And you know, do I want to give that Coca-Cola and expect 50 Coca-Colas back? I don't know. It seems like a silly illustration, but I'm sorry it was silly. Number one, you want to remember and know and put down in your soul that God is your source. Your wallet isn't your source. Your job isn't your source. God is the one who supplies the seed for you to sow. If it's a dollar, if it's five dollars, if it's a thousand dollars, it makes no difference. God is the source of your giving. We have seen numerous times here at Mosaic Church of the Nazarene where there has been a need by someone that we become in contact with in our parking lot of our church. 
And God blesses us that are around, that can see vision-wise, that we have an opportunity that's laid in front of us by Almighty God that we now can give and sow into that person's life. Do we accept something back? Nope, not a thing. Do we expect them to repay us? Nope, probably never see it anyway. But almost always, 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 there's a blessing that comes back around somewhere from some other direction that God brings back into our life a blessing because we sowed a seed in somebody's life. It might not be a lot, but it's a little bit. And you also have to plant something if you want it to grow. You can buy seeds all day long and have them on your counter and all pretty pictures of petunias and all sorts of flower seeds and, and fruit seeds and all sorts of seeds and everything. But if you don't plant them, they can't grow. We're also told that uh, uh, you're supposed to sow on, on fertile ground, not uh, sow on rocks and not sow in bad soil. And, but to choose fertile ground, the most fertile that you can do. And that's where ministries will say, you should invest in, let's say, Mosaic Church of the Nazarene because we're fertile ground. And so as you sow into us, God's going to bless you. Well, if you look at it that way, I don't know if you're going to get the blessing you thought you would get. Because the third factor is you need to expect a miracle in your life. Of some nature, somewhere, God is going to do something special for you. But it's not going to come from where you sowed your seed. If you sow a seed in Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, don't expect a blessing back from Mosaic. Hey, I'm going to give you guys a hundred dollars. Well, if I give $100, which I've done a number of times to different projects that we have, I don't expect the church to pay me back. I don't expect to have being paid back with interest. But almost always, 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 there's a blessing and a return on that investment, if you would, that seed that is sown. But it comes from a different direction, a different source. God will do that for us. My wife, Bonnie, and her son, who has passed away, Mark, planted some tulip bulbs on my mother's grave out near North Branch over 14 years ago. And to this day, every spring, we take a drive out Lake Road, out through Outer Lake, going out towards North Branch. And there's a little country cemetery in the middle of nowhere, and right by the road, by a huge, huge oak tree, is my parents' headstone. And right on the back side of that headstone, right beside my mother's name, is tulips that grow. Every single year, tulips, beautiful tulips, come up. They're reproducing, they're coming up from those bulbs that were planted years and years and years ago. There isn't corn coming up where they planted tulips. There isn't an oak tree coming up where they planted the tulip bulbs. Tulips are coming up. She protected a little sprout, my wife did, right in behind the house that we lived years ago, and she said that it was an oak tree. Oak tree? A little sprouty thing about that tall is an oak tree? And that had come up because a squirrel had planted an acorn in a bunch of dirt in behind the house. And so she put rocks around it, she protected it, and to this day, right now, there's an oak tree probably that big around and probably, oh, I don't know, 30 feet tall, right behind our house. An oak tree came up because an acorn was allowed to grow. It sprouted and up came a tree, a beautiful oak tree. Not tulips, that was from the tulip bulbs. This is from an acorn. Corn fields. Look at the corn fields that are being harvested now. Soybeans, potatoes. Um, you can take a bag of nasty potatoes if you want to, cut them up in pieces, go out and bury them and whatever. In a few months, you can dig up bushels to potatoes. For some reason, they multiply like crazy. Wheat 
and sugar beets and cucumbers. When we drive out into the thumb of Michigan, you can see great big, huge, 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 huge collection places for sugar beets. It's amazing. And we got a big sugar company out in, a uh, cane sugar company out in our thumb area here in Michigan. It always amazes me the amount of produce that can come from that. A friend of mine, his name is Malcolm, he goes to a church not far from here, right down Mount Morris Road, and years ago when we developed that property, we had a big pile of topsoil that we put over in one corner of the build, uh, property, and um, down from that topsoil, down by a little creek, Malcolm every year tills up an area and plants a garden. Every year down from Eagles Nest Church. He has tomatoes, sweet corn, green peppers, green onions, all sorts of stuff that he plants there, and it grows like crazy because, number one, it's fertile soil. It's well watered because there's a little stream not far from there and is pretty shaded, but yet gets enough sunlight that the stuff really grows nice. And for some reason this year there was an overabundance of tomatoes. And they were just hanging there, basically going to rot. And we were allowed to go there, and we ran our dog around there at nighttime and everything. And we got bushels and bushels of tomatoes, green peppers, onion, um, onions out of the ground, all sorts of things, because Malcolm took time to plant little tiny seeds, little tiny tomato plants, little tiny peppers, and all of a sudden there was an abundance of what grew. Remember, God is our source. You have to plant something to make it grow and to expect a miracle when you do that. On my way home tonight, from uh, we have a church food giveaway. I have some food, some boxes of things that I take around to about four or five different individuals in our area. And one place I go, over on Francis Road, these people have a, a small house in the middle of a cornfield. They own the cornfield. There's only about 60-some acres around them there, but they also have a 300-acre plot of property where they alternate it, corn and then soybeans, corn and soybeans, for the, for the soil's sake. I went over there right before I came here. And here is an ear of corn that was just picked probably about an hour and a half ago. And this ear of corn is absolutely a miracle in itself, how that things grow. And I take, I'm gonna take my pencil, my ink pen, and I'm gonna make a mark. I think I'm gonna make a mark. I guess I'm not going to make a mark because it's not going to write on the corn because it's too, too gritty. I'll use that as a starting point. I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty rows of little corns, 20 rows on one cob of corn. Now, let's see here if I can count again. And Jeff, you might have to help me with math, OK? Oh, another thing too, folks, look it up. Corn always has even rows of, of kernels. You can look it up. Only time that it has uneven rows of kernels is just like if you find a four-leaf clover. Same odds of finding an four-leaf clover of having a corn cob with odd numbers of rows. So, let's count this, Jeff. You ready? ready. You ready? Okay. Um, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, that's about the average 44 or 45 kernels in each row. 
And how many rows did we have, Jeff? 20 altogether. 20. That makes easy math. 20 times what did I say? 45. 45 times 20? 900. 900. Okay. So if we take, whoa, uh -oh, I'm losing them. If we only take, let's even be generous, and we plant three kernels, three, one, two, three. That's what we're told to plant when we plant gardens. Jeff, is that right? Three kernels in, 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 every, in every little hole you dig, you plant three kernels of corn, right? Amen. So Jeff has a beautiful garden at his place. Jeff is the place out on um, Vienna Road where we go to have baptisms. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's called The Farm. If you're ever in our area, come by, see us at Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. We'll get a hold of Jeff, go out to his place. It's it's a blessing. It's, it's like a, a place where God lives out behind his house. But he's got a beautiful garden. But you take three of those, Jeff, and you plant them in each hill that you want your corn to grow, right? Yep. You don't plant them too close because they'll squash out each other. You don't plant them too far away or you're just wasting area. There's a certain distance that you plant them apart and almost, not 100%, but almost guaranteed there's going to be some kind of a stalk come up out of the ground somehow. I don't know how it all works, but they come out of the ground. And that stalk grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And all of a sudden they can get this high. And some farmers' fields, their stalks can be six or eight feet tall. Huge, huge stalks of corn. And on each stalk, how many ears of corn can you get, Jeff? Do you think? Three or four. Three, three or four? Yep. Well, that's a good stock. A lot of people are happy in farmers if they get two or three. Yep. And how many ear, kernels of corn did we have? 900. 900 times three is 2,700. 2,700 of these, whoa, of these little kernels, I can't even grab the kernel of these little kernels came forth when we planted that in the ground. Talk about the idea of sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. And if we, by faith, can take something little that we have, just something little, reach down deep in our pocket and take out something little and give to a project, to a family that's in need, to some organization that needs your help. But out of faith, plant that. Look what can happen. And you talk about a field that might be two or three hundred acres of these things. This is some of the stuff that helps power your cars now, at least in the state of Michigan. It's incredible what farmers are doing with their products. Sometimes, and I just picked these up, of the same cornfield, not more than 30 feet apart. Here's kind of a weird looking one. Are we all the same? Is, 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 uh, is the benefits we get or the harvest that we get, is it always exactly like that? It's not guaranteed, but we're going to get a harvest. What happens in the time if something's too wet? If you sow it in something that's wet in a bad area of a field, farmers know that, but they plant and the corn don't come up quite so nice because it was wet. But they still, by faith, planted seed and they did get some response from their seed. There's probably only probably 50 or 60 kernels on that one. But if all they did was plant one, you plant one, you got 60 back. Some are little. Some are short. Some have weird things growing out on them like crazy. Then you have great big nice ones just like that. Why can't we as Christians apply that principle to our lives. No, you're not necessarily a farmer. And I sure ain't no farmer. Jeff is a gentleman's farmer. He has a very, very, I'm so jealous of Jeff's farm. He's, he has, Jeff's the kind of guy that in his farm, 
he, he tills it all up good, then he puts that black stuff down and he cuts holes in the black stuff to where his tomato plants don't have weeds growing all up around it. Jeff's a smart farmer. But he invests time in planting that little, little plant, watering that plant, fertilizing that plant, and as a result, he gets beautiful tomatoes, good corn, whatever he plants, green beans, he reaps the harvest. Folks, if we are so fortunate, God gives us times and places and people that we can invest in. I'm not asking you to invest in church, in, in uh, Mosaic Church, I almost said Richfield Church in Nazarene, in Mosaic Church in Nazarene. You can invest in Richfield if you'd like to. I don't care. Wonderful. Bless your heart. Here's what I want you to invest in. A hundred percent. Throw yourself into it. Without regard. In the book of Galatians, it says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. If you today will invest in people's lives in love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, kindness, you are going to reap back Love, joy, gentleness, reap. You, you'll reap that back. The Bible says, pressed down, shaken together, is God going to give back into your bosom what you sow? You might not have a lot of money. Not many people during this time of COVID have an overabundance of money. I'm talking to a lot of people who have been laid off. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people don't know where and how in the next few years things are going to work out for us. Things are kind of shaky. We need to be on our knees come Sunday morning praying for our president, whoever the president may be. But we need to love. We need to give kindness. We need to bring up people that are trod downtrodden. You see what I'm saying? Invest just a couple kernels of corn. And God can bless you. He's going to bring this back to you from all sorts of different sources. You have no idea. So walk in the Spirit. Sow the fruits of the Spirit. Sow them and give others praise. Give others a sweet spirit that comes from within inside of you. Make stumbling blocks, stepping stones for people to make them better than who they are. Be happy when somebody else shines. Remember, God is the source. Our time, talents, our very being. you got to plant to grow, folks. If you don't plant it, nothing's going to grow. Take time in plant, in, to plant and invest in other people. Expect a miracle from somewhere where you least expect it. God gives the increase, guaranteed. There's a famous preacher on TV, T.D. Jakes, um, has a big church. I think it's down in Dallas or Fort Worth. I don't know exactly where it is now. I saw a special on him once where the first building was a store building that him and his wife took out a mortgage on and put their whole lives into, that they bought a building for $12,000. And every day he would go out with a broom and sweep the sidewalk and meet people. Today, T.D. Jakes has a worldwide ministry, as many of you know. Jerry Falwell, where I went to college, when he came out of Baptist Bible College, he went back to Lynchburg, Virginia, his home, own hometown, and the Bible says that a prophet is not welcome, usually in his own town. But Jerry went back to his hometown and started a church in a little building that he was able to rent from a guy, and it was called the Donald Duck Bottling Company. They, they made syrupy drinks, 
something like, um, I think th there's nothing better to me than M&S um, orange soda or M&S cream soda. Oh, it's good. But talk about syrupy, nasty stuff. And every Sunday, they would take, and two or three people would get together, and they would scrape the floors with scrapers, trying to scrape the syrup off the floors. Year after year after year, they scraped the floors, scraped the floors, scraped the walls. Little tiny uh, Donald Duck bottling company. And he made it his goal when they first started Thomas Road Baptist Church that he took their phone book and he started with A and he visited himself every single home in his city. That would be quite a goal if you lived in Detroit, wouldn't it? Or in Washington, D.C., let alone Clio or Mount Morris. But he made it a goal. And then once he did that, he started back again with A. And he dedicated himself to learn the names, addresses, and phone numbers of everybody in that phone book. Paul Cunningham, who was familiar to people who are in the Church of the Nazarene, was the general superintendent of the Worldwide Church of the Nazarene in 1993. He was the pastor of the college in Olathe, Kansas, where he even still lives. In 1964, he pastored the church there at the college in, in there. For over 30 years, he grew and grew and grew, and he started out with 54 people in 1964. They were given about $11,000 a year. And when he retired in 1993, there was over 3,000 in attendance every Sunday morning with a budget of over $3 million. I'm thankful for the guys tonight. I asked them if they would sing the song, Make Me a Blessing. Make me a blessing to someone today. That's my prayer. Every time... I go out of my house, I say, who can I be a blessing to? Someone, somewhere, today. That's my goal. Invest to sow a seed into someone's life. Now here's the old dog trying a new trick. I'm going to look up the words of a song. I'm not going to sing it. I want to read you the words. Written by Chuck Milhoff is called The Brush. Life started out like a canvas, and God started painting on me. But I took the paintbrush from Jesus and painted what I wished to see. The colors I painted kept running, and the objects were out of size. I made a mess out of my painting. My way now seemed so unwise. Then I gave my painting to Jesus. All the colors and the pieces so wrong. In the markets of earth, it was worthless, but his blood made my painting belong. He worked with no condemnation, never mentioned the mess that I had made. Then he dipped his brush in a rainbow and signed it. The price has been paid. When I gave the brush back to Jesus and I gave the brush back to him, he started all over life's canvas to fill when I gave Jesus the brush of my will. Folks, today, remember, God is your source. Remember, you need to plant for something to grow and to expect a miracle. Expect miracles in your life as you plant love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, and live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, be controlled by the Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, today I thank you for your word. I thank you for simple illustrations. I thank you for the corn in a field. I pray that as we drive down these roads, it's harvest time. We see fields by the hundreds of acres being harvested. And remember that somebody took plan, took time to work up that soil, to cultivate it, to fertilize it, 
and to plant and to trust you, dear Jesus, to give us the rain, give us the sunshine, give us the right temperatures for it to grow and to produce the fruit that we plant. Lord, do the same thing in our lives and all those that we come in contact with. Raise churches up around us to be great and powerful churches. Help each one of us to expect miracles as we plant because we know that, God, you are the source. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you for tuning in to our midweek service. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. We will be continuing our in-person services and we'd love to have you join us. You'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others. <music>